The big question uh, that concerns my research is how can we go beyond today's paradigm of storing information and computing information? And for 40 years, we've had a paradigm whereby all the devices we're using are essentially two-dimensional in character. And after 40 years, we've reached the limitations of the technologies where we store information, for example, in magnetic disk drives, and we compute information in silicon-based uh, computing systems today. And the reason for the end, if you like, of the, these two technologies is that we've been scaling both those technologies in two dimensions. So the big question is how do we go beyond that paradigm and into the third dimension, thereby allowing us to improve, for example, the computing capacity of memory elements or storage elements or the computing power of computing systems. At the heart of the approach that we are using is a new field of research called spintronics. So all of conventional technologies today, memory and computing technologies, use electrons. They use currents of electrons or you store numbers of electrons. But an electron has a property called spin, and we can create currents of electrons that are spin polarized. And in certain types of materials, we can control the flow of these currents of spin polarized electrons, enabling us to create new devices. So an important device that actually I invented a few years ago is called a spin valve device, and it detects tiny magnetic fields. And this allowed us, for example, to improve the storage capacity of a conventional magnetic disk drive by a thousand times because of the exquisite ability of this spin valve device to detect tiny magnetic fields or tiny magnetic regions in which information is stored. But we want to go beyond that, because that technology has reached the end of its uh, two-dimensional roadmap. We want to go into the third dimension. And with some very interesting new spintronic phenomena and materials, we could create a new type of storage device with entirely different principles, which is innately three-dimensional and would consist of billions of what we call racetracks which are essentially vertical columns of magnetic material in which we store tiny magnetic regions representing zeros and ones, and we manipulate them using an entirely spintronic phenomena, a current of spin-polarized electrons that can move this information up and down these racetracks, and we've recently demonstrated at speeds exceeding a kilometer per second. This will enable us to build a completely solid-state device with about 100 times the capacity of today's solid-state drives, for example, because of the innate three-dimensional nature of this new concept, entirely derived from new physics of spintronics that we've evolved and discovered, in fact, just in the last two or three years. The key findings are that we have, in the last three or four years, discovered four distinct new physical phenomena related to spin-orbit coupling that enables us to manipulate domain walls in these racetracks extremely efficiently with current pulses, much more so than we had anticipated just two or three years ago. So these key findings are firstly, that if you pass current into a regular metal, you can create a current of purely spin, which is purely a spin current, no charge current at all. And this means, for example, let us take a platinum wire. You pass a current along this wire, you generate a spin current around the circumference of the wire in a chiral fashion. It will be rotating in a clockwise or an anti-clockwise direction, depending upon the direction of the charge current. Then the spin current that we create in this way can diffuse into the racetrack, the magnetic material in which we're going to store this information, and that creates torques on the domain walls in this racetrack, and then can cause them to move. But in order that it can do this, a second important finding is that these racetracks consist of just a nanometer thick layer of magnetic material in which by design the magnetization points perpendicular to the racetrack. And then as you go along the racetrack, the magnetic moments in one region will be pointing up, in the next will be pointing down, and then up again. But in fact, as they go from an up to a down magnetized region, the moments will be rotating in a chiral direction. So as you move from an up to a down direction, the moments will be, let's say, going along the wire in this direction. But when they rotate from up to down, up down to up, they'll be rotating opposite direction. So you actually have a chiral magnetization along this wire. And this is due to a very interesting exchange interaction between the magnetic material and, for example, platinum. It's called the Dirzhinsky-Maria exchange which causes magnetic moments not to be parallel as in a ferromagnet or anti-parallel as in an anti-ferromagnet, but to be perpendicular to each other in a chiral fashion. So we have two chiral physical phenomena 
operating in tandem, which cause these domain walls to move. And this is, in essence, the physics of manipulating domain walls at these very high speeds. But beyond that, a very important finding of ours was that we can actually make all the magnetic moments in the racetrack disappear. Because magnetic moments interact with each other. So you're familiar with bar magnets on a refrigerator. They will either want to be parallel or anti-parallel, depending on how you position them. And this is a major problem on the nanoscale nanoscopic magnetic elements will interact with each other through these so-called dipole fringing fields. And the interactions are enormous. They increase inversely with the size of the device. So we have to make those disappear. And just last year, we discovered that we could build a racetrack which has two racetracks, one on top of each other, which are exactly coupled anti-parallel to one another. So in aggregate, each of these magnetic domains has no net magnetization. And amazingly, we discovered that in this racetrack, with no net magnetization, these magnetic regions will actually move 10 times faster. And so this enables us to move these magnetic bits extremely efficiently, 10 times more efficiently than was possible just a couple of years ago. Last but not least is another physical phenomenon. It's called proximity-induced magnetization. And what happens is the magnetic racetrack causes platinum to become magnetic. It's very significant, so that perhaps 50% of the magnetization in a single racetrack will be, to, will be evolved from the platinum itself. And in my own mind, this proximity-induced moment is extremely important in the physics of the motion of these domain walls. So we have essentially four intertwined physical phenomena that amazingly have to all work in tandem to make these domain walls move when we pass a current into this racetrack. And we typically use very short current pulses so we can move the, race, the domain walls the distance that is needed. The findings have two relevances. One is technological and one is perhaps scientific. So technologically, what we've done is we've demonstrated that a completely new concept for a technology, innately three-dimensional, that could enable us to replace, for example, the old-fashioned mechanical rotating disk drives with an entirely solid-state device which would be much more reliable and would be much more energy efficient. At the same time, we've discovered, because of this new physics, that uh, this racetrack has the possibility of extremely fast reading and writing. So we could actually use this racetrack memory technology to replace, for example, the fastest memory today, which is called static random access memory. In principle, we could devise a racetrack technology that we, where, in which we could trade off speed and before speed and speed and performance and density by having racetracks in which we would allow different numbers of domain walls. So the same racetrack, we could have one domain wall, be super fast, 100 domain walls, which would be slower, still fast, but would be much denser. This is unique to this technology. So technologically, we've demonstrated after uh, this time that racetrack in principle could work. Scientifically, we've actually discovered entirely new ways of manipulating magnetization. And very interestingly, uh, I mentioned that we convert charge current to spin current. This is something called a spin hall effect. And in metals, just three or four years ago, it was thought to be very inefficient. What we and others have demonstrated is remarkably that we have very large efficiencies of converting charge current into spin currents. And so this is what the, uh, maybe the technological and scientific impact is. I think the outlook is uh, extremely exciting. Uh, the field of spintronics has continues to evolve a lot of new discoveries and new materials. So one uh, example is that uh, we've discovered these very interesting chiral domain walls which innately have non-collinear magnetization distributions. And it turns out there are a lot of other objects magnetically which have even more interesting non-collinear magnetic distributions. One example is something called a skirmion. A skirmion is a tiny, uh, if you like, circular magnetic object or cylindrical object in which the boundary is innately chiral. And uh, again, these can be manipulated with current in different ways. These seem to be very interesting. So the future could be going beyond conventional magnetic materials in which moments point parallel or antiparallel to much more interesting uh, uh, concepts is one example, one possible outlook. Other outlooks is that we want to go, of course, uh, we have to be able to build this magnetic racetrack. And today, uh, it's very interesting that it involves uh, film layers, which are atomic layer dimensions. Uh, 
So to create this racetrack, it's about seven atomic layers of magnetic material on a few atomic layers of another material. So we have to devise ways of implementing it by building these racetracks vertically. This is a real challenge. But I think the outlook is, uh, for many devices, going beyond two dimensions to three dimensions. And we have to learn how to build devices in three-dimensional space. And this turns out to be non-trivial. Many approaches, but uh, we, there are many more interesting ways uh, of, of doing this. And I think this is a, a hugely interesting area of research, how to build structures which are at, with atomic dimensions on, in a three-dimensional world. I think spintronics is a really interesting area of research because it, 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 it is involved with the concept of building artificial materials. And we build these one atomic layer at a, at a time. And this, uh, we can do this using techniques uh, which are manu manufacturable compatible but we can build entirely new materials this way with properties not found in any of these materials. Very interestingly, if you take material A and material B with certain properties, the interface between the materials A and B can be entirely distinct. And this again means it's difficult to make predictions even, but which have a very interesting properties. So for example, you can take two insulating materials and the interface can be a metal. And this is another area of which I think is super exciting how can we imagine building computing systems which are innately much more energy efficient than today's computing systems? So this goes beyond just memory and storage. It goes beyond how can we maybe use those similar concepts to carry out some type of computation. But we want to do this much with much less energy than today's silicon-based computers. And by way of inspiration, we look at our own brain. Our own brain uses a few watts of power to carry out computations that are equivalent to one of today's supercomputers. So it uses about a million times less energy per computing operation than a silicon-based computing system. And we have to imagine ways in which we could do that in not biological material, but in conventional materials, but which will be innately three-dimensional in where they're configured. Because innately, the brain has computing devices, the neurons, which are connected by maybe 10,000 wires to each other. And we don't know how to do this today. Our devices we make today are basically two-dimensional arrays of very simple devices connected in very simple ways. So we have to imagine ways of doing this uh, entirely differently. I think this is a super interesting uh, project for which we have no obvious answers. Indeed, so the, the, the concept is that we can create artificial materials by building them one atomic layer at a time. But another very interesting area of research that has evolved just over the last five or six years is that the surface of a material can have properties entirely distinct from the interior. These are called topological insulators. It means you can take an insulating material where the surface will have be conducting. But it's conducting in very interesting ways. So for example, electrons traveling in one direction will have their spin oriented in, let's say, an up direction but electrons traveling in the opposite direction will automatically have their spin in the other direction. And this is a very interesting topolo topological phenomenon, but you can imagine, of course, this could have very important device implications, because in this way we can innately create currents of electrons with spin in one direction, and we could then use these to manipulate other materials in this way. So this is this, what I think the point is that today uh, the concept of surfaces and interfaces in two dimensions or even in three dimensions have extraordinarily interesting properties that the individual materials may not have. And some of these are simply uh, not found in any other material. And it's these topological properties in particular which means that some aspects of the properties are protected from disturbances, which means again uh, from an application point of view they may be very, very relevant. So I think it's this uh, intersection of extraordinarily interesting physics and materials which we create in engineer to have certain properties coupled with their potential usage for interesting technological applications that is a super interesting area of research. That's my own research.